when I was at like a little party or whatever. It was right after I graduated. Uh, I got really sick. I kept on throwing up, and I just remember seeing like everything went black, and I just saw like a white picket fence. And one side was like death, and one side was like life. And I was just really close to the fence, but I was on the life side still. And uh, I just remember feeling God just, you know, giving me a wake up call, I guess. And that wasn't fully enough to make me turn back to him yet, but it was enough to make me think a little bit, you know? When I was a Christian in high school, you know what I'm saying? I felt like I couldn't have a lot of friends or whatever because I didn't want to be distracted and I didn't want to like lose my focus on God. But I was kind of getting sick of that. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? Like I was kind of irritated with God too because my Uncle Jack had passed away and that was like kind of a frustrating thing, I guess. I just kind of started doing my own thing. Uh, I wanted to get more popular, so I did, you know what I'm saying? It was pretty fun. Then I started partying, getting involved in, uh, you know, smoking weed and doing other things like that. Being more popular just made it high school a lot more fun for me. I was kind of sick of serving God and feeling like, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't getting anything back, I guess. You know, I kind of want to do my own thing, yeah. you know, serve myself, live for myself. Yeah. I went over to one of my buddy's houses. And I knew what I was doing. I knew I was smoking weed, but I promised my mom already maybe five or ten times even that I wasn't going to smoke weed. But I knew I was. I was lying right to her face. And, um, you know, I did it. So I got my mom's car and she smelled it right away. Um, she knew. So then I came home. She went through one of my bags and she found a little piece that I had. And, um, she was like, that's it, I'm, you know, I can't have this in my house, you're, you're gone, you gotta leave. And I was just, I started crying, you know, it was really, uh, I was really scared. I remember thinking to myself that there was no way I was about to lose my home and my family over something so, like, so small, you know, something so stupid, honestly. Um, and I just begged her to, like, let me stay, and she was like, no, I'm not putting up with that. And she was like, if you're serious at all, then go and break that. So she gave me a hammer, I took it off the driveway, and I smashed it myself. Really stupid to do in the driveway, but I did, you know what I'm saying, lesson learned. Um, a lot of glass there, but, uh, no, she finally, like, was willing to kind of like listen to me after I did that because it showed her I was serious, you know? And I just talked to her and I was like, just apologizing, you know, I didn't have any excuses to make because I knew it was stupid, I knew what I was doing. Um, but again, for some reason, she just showed me mercy. She gave me another chance. And uh, that just meant a lot to me. So I went to uh, church the next morning and I was like, okay, clearly my way is not working anymore. I'm getting kind of sick of it, you know? I keep on letting my mom down, letting Justin down, letting, you know, all the family that matter to me, you know? decided to lift my hand up for some reason. And like, right as my hand got over my waist, I remember tears falling from my face. And I remember feeling like this outer shell that I created uh, to myself, you know, like kind of holding everything in that God was trying to do. I was kind of holding it back, not really letting it happen, but this shell that was holding it back just broke. Like God finally shattered that and I was able to uh, feel him. He flooded in, into my heart so fast. And uh, that's how I knew I was just, I was missing out on a lot, you know, all those times that I chose to turn away from him. Chad Markle, man. Dad Chad's a good guy. Um, I actually remember right after service on Sunday, me and him were having a conversation. And uh, if you don't know anything about me, like, I didn't really have a good dad. I don't have a relationship with, all, like, with him at all anymore. I don't speak to him or anything. And um, Dad Chad just told me that he was thinking about me, that he was praying for me, and that he was really glad that I came to church that Sunday. For some reason, he just, I don't know what made him say that, but he did. And it meant the world to me. And I just remember feeling like someone who's not even my own dad could love me that much, simply because God loved him that much. And, uh... I don't know, that just really helped me and encouraged me. So he prayed with me and, uh, you know, but, but that's not the only guy. A bunch of people, you know, have been there for me. You know, none of you guys have turned your back on me, even though I was doing, you know, dumb stuff all the time. But uh, that kind of stuff has really uplifted me, you know, just conversations and community with you guys and conversations with God, you know, prayer. Um, not even with me so much because I wasn't really with him at the time, but, you know, you guys prayed for me. Dad Chad was praying for me. Stuff like that really uh, helped me to kind of get my focus back where it needed to be. I gave God that chance, one chance on a Sunday morning to have a little bit of control and everything turned around for the better. I love my life more now than I ever have. My mom and me have a really good relationship. Me and Justin are getting close and that's really good and they forgive me, they you know move on from it and that's because God you know, helps, you know, first of all, me to change my life, but that grace and mercy that he extended to me, they extended the same exact thing. I lost my values, which obviously caused a lot of destruction. So that's really important to kind of encourage maybe other people, you know, that, uh, you know, if you don't want to lose your values, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to destroy what God's trying to call you to be, maybe you should try giving him a chance, you know, letting him be the center of your story.